Oh my god, the knife is working! It's working! <laughs> oh my god, how many was that? Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. So guys, today we are going to be having a chat about one of the most commonly requested topics in my comments section, implants. And no, I'm not going to be doing a roast on the implant system today like we did a few months back. Now, nah, today we actually are going to have a chat about the 52 implants in this game currently and have a look at which ones are best to focus on upgrading or acquiring first and which ones you should look at investing into later in your time in game. Now, I'm not going to lie guys, I had a very hard time deciding exactly how it was going to go through all of the implants in the game and organize them into a way that was coherent in a video. So with the help of you legends on one of my recent Twitch streams, we have put these implants into a tier list, rating them from E to S in tiers. Now before we get into what implants we put into which tiers, I want to establish the criteria that we used to rank these implants into their respective tiers. I understand that some people consider different implants to be amazing for their playstyles, which is why I decided to set this criteria to ensure that when it came to tiering everything, we could justify the decisions made, all the while not devaluing why someone may consider a certain implant to be better than the one I put into a certain tier, so on and so forth. So here's the criteria for this tier list for the implant system. Number one, the cost to benefit ratio. How much investment do you need to put into the implant and upgrading it before it starts to have a significant payoff? Number two, the universal application. How many situations can you make use of this implant? How many times are you going to likely pick this implant over something else in the list? Is this only applicable to one build? If it's a class specific implant, is it a matter of how often you're going to pick this implant over the general batch normally available? And number three, how powerful is the implant? It's as simple as that. How powerful is the implant in the grand scheme of things? It's essentially about considering the cost to benefit ratio of the implants available in the game and which ones are going to provide you the best bang for your buck on the loadouts that you use commonly. Which is why some people may see some of their favorite implants that complement their top tier loadouts at the bottom of the board. Please don't take it personally guys, this is just a tier list based on the criteria that we have established. Now, in the essence of time, we're only going to be showing the implants' as actual mechanics and upgrades on the screen while we talk about what tier we've put them in, so just keep that in mind as well guys. But I feel like with all that in mind, we should be getting into the implants themselves. Let's start from the bottom and move our way up the list. The E tier here represents the bottom of the run, the implants that are either far too expensive to get into and provide limited capabilities, or just simply only work on very selected loadouts that require extensive in-game knowledge and strange class builds that you wouldn't normally run in battle. The implants in this tier are Gunslinger, Vampire, Heavyweight, Response Jacket, Paratrooper, Nanomesh Specialist, Assassin, Covert Drop, Fortify, Overdrive, Nightmare, Avoidance, Cold Heart, Experimental Stims, Firewall, and Minor Cloak. Here's why. Gunslinger. It places a huge amount of focus on your sidearm, and you would be better off running other implants on any loadout where you could consider running this thing here. It simply doesn't have a place in the game right now with the current mechanics. Vampire. I knew this one would be controversial by putting it in E tier. Don't get me wrong, this is a great implant to be a pain in the ass with as it gives you great health for every sidearm and knife kill at CQC at max range, and it synergizes very well with Carapace on selected loadouts. I use it for time to time for god's sakes. But to use it demands that you adopt a strange playstyle that requires a lot of skill and it's very expensive to get into. So for that reason alone, it's down in E tier. Heavyweight, it simply is not worth taking in a movement based infantry versus infantry standpoint. It's just too important. Save the ISO for something else that doesn't restrict your movement. Response Jacket, this in theory can let you have the effects of both nanowave armor and flak armor at the same time. But the issue here is that the implant only triggers after you take the damage, which will leave you worse wear the majority of the time. If the implant's effects were present before the fact that you took the damage, this would be a no-brainer. But in its current state, no. There's too much risk. 
Paratrooper, our first class specific implant for the light assault, and you should definitely avoid it at all cost. Waiting on your jump jet fuel to restore by taking damage is not a healthy mindset to be in, and flying while taking damage is a sure way to make yourself an easy target. This implant is just simply not worth it. Nanomesh Specialist. Now this implant can be useful in select defensive situations when you're activating a heavy shield before you peek a corner or something like that. But in this current meta, there are other implants that are simply going to be a lot better for the heavy assault. So for that reason alone, we're avoiding Nanomesh Specialist. Assassin. Now this implant is geared very much towards snipers considering the ranges that the implant triggers on out of the gate. But the effect of the implant can be easily achieved by good movement and good cloaking practices and therefore keeping your enemies guessing by simply moving after every kill. Maxing out the implant sees it become slightly useful for other classes, but these other classes are frontline classes and therefore being Q-spotted has less of an impact. The benefit does not match the cost at all. Covert Drop here is an implant that will cloak you for a second or two, rank depending when you take full damage, but will uncloak you as soon as you shoot. Trying to adopt this thing will simply get you killed more often than not, as it requires you to actually take full damage to activate, so simply don't bother with it. Fortify here only activates when you interact with a capture point. Again, it's cool in theory, but it wouldn't be something you would take over the other options 9 times out of 10. Make this a later upgrade if you find yourself defending a lot of capture points in your time, but again, it's not something I'd take out of the gate. Overdrive, it's simple. If you love road killing peoples and harasser with this thing, it's a nice thing to have, but make it a late game thing to get into. There are so many more important implants to upgrade first. Nightmare. Now, good old Nightmare. Some people swear by this one and will be swearing at me in the comment section for putting it in E tier. Again, this implant is only going to be incredibly useful to select loadouts like Ambusher, Jump Jet, Light Assaults. And in addition, is only that great once you max it out, which is expensive as all hell. This is low on the priority list here just due to how limited its uses are. Avoidance. Okay, this implant here is the first exception on the list, and we're actually going to cover a fair few here in this E tier. Your movements with this implant no longer trigger mines, and your Spitfire turret acquisition range is reduced by 50%. Now, if this implant was a common and could be upgraded over time and carried the same effects, I would suggest taking this for newer players to learn about how to deal with mines and such, but being exceptional the cost to benefit ratio just doesn't add up in the late game, and it's not worth taking over other implant slots. Cold Heart, the implant speeds up recovery of heat based weaponry and tools whenever you get a headshot kill. The implant is only useful to Vanu players who have heat based weapons in their hands. To us NCNTR, you should be trying to yeet this thing into the nearest available sun, it is not worth it at all. Experimental Stims, same case. It's a RNG based benefit for whenever you use medical or restoration kits. It's just far too random to reliably use, just don't use them at all. Firewall, if you're a base turret main, go for it. But again, the amount of times this is actually going to benefit you is next to none. Again, I don't understand why this isn't exceptional. Minor Cloak, again, if you're going to remain stationary for 8 seconds, you will cloak. But I'm sorry, you're going to be dead by then. Again, don't know why this implant is exceptional. Alright, so that's E tier, that's the worst of the worst. Again, a lot of implants in there because they're simply ineffective in most situations and they cost too much to get into. But let's move on to the D tier implants, the implants that start to become a little bit more useful, but still fall a little bit short in the value department in the long term. In this tier, we have Safe Fall, Athlete, Critical Chain, Ransack, Sidewinder, Aerial Combatant, Electrotech, Failsafe, Counterintelligence, Disengage, Salvage, and Target Focus. And we're going to start off with Safe Fall. Good old Safe Fall. This was a very controversial uh, placement of this implant on the tier list in the livestream where we built the tier list. Considering that this is a quintessential implant for those of you who are learning the Light Assault or who are running endgame ambusher jump jet builds to save you from taking unnecessary fall damage. With that said, that's where the implant sort of starts to see its long-term effectiveness start to fall short. If you have nothing else to really put on your character in the early game, it can work well on other classes at things like tower fights. But as you progress, you will start to see other implants take priority, which means that the long-term adaptability of this implant starts to fall short. 
Athlete is next up. Now I've seen some people love this implant for a more aggressive playstyle, and it can have its uses in environments where you need to cover some ground very quickly. But again, I normally have other implants that take priority on my builds over this thing. A nice implant to use in the early game, but I wouldn't place a huge emphasis on upgrading it early. I'd rather focus on getting other implants instead. Critical Chain. Oh boy, look, before this implant was fixed in the latest update, I would have easily put this thing in B tier. But now, it only really caters to infiltrators who can quickly and reliably get chain headshots with sniper rifles. It also would have been higher up on the list if the maximum pressure alert was still a thing, as this implant did work with the Archer. In fact, it still continues to work with the Archer on the Engineer class. And let me tell you, Archer plus Critical Chain plus a shit ton of maxes was an amazing time. Now the implant is fun, but a lot more situational. Only upgrade it and chase it down if you're a really good sniper. Ransack is next on the list, and this is great for vehicle combat, especially aggressive vehicle combat, but you do need to get close to take advantage of its benefits. It's definitely worth getting into over time, but it is something that honestly can come later in your playtime unless you plan to dedicate your time to tanking or harasser driving. Sidewinder is next as well. Sidewinder is the complete opposite of Athlete, and focuses on strafing. It can be fun for some late game IVI, or infantry versus infantry high mobility loadouts, but it is again something that I feel is often placed aside in favor of other implants. Just keep that in mind. Aerial Combatant, this is our second light assault exclusive in the list here. Once again, this is another implant that has moved down the list since a nerf that we received. Back when this implant initially released, this would automatically refill ambush jump jets every time you got a kill while using them at max rank, whereas now it only refills a portion of their capacity, which is still makes them useful for ambush jump jets, but it has a lot less focus placed on it as a result of the unfortunate nerf. I think these were actually unfairly nerfed, personally, and Mulcast definitely agrees with me on that front, I know that much. But, yeah, again, definitely a little bit less on the priority list now that they have been nerfed. Electrotech is the first engineer-focused implant on the list, and can have some limited uses for a max suit support loadout, or even a vehicle operator, but its uses I find to be a little bit too situational, again, to justify overtaking with other implants. Again, you may be able to MacGyver it into certain situations, just don't focus too hard on upgrading this thing to max. Failsafe. The implant only really benefits heavy assaults and their overshields, but being honest, you can get the exact same benefit by maxing out a simulate and not be reliant on your shields going down for the advantage to take effect. As a result, I generally would not consider this unless you find scoring headshots hard. But again, that comes down to practicing over time. Counterintelligence. Now, this is an exceptional implant that actually has some awesome functionality in aircraft as it allows you to quickly spot out enemy AA positions that damage you, but that's where its uses kind of stop. Again, the cost of it being an exceptional when compared against the amount of situations you would take it sees it falling short on the list. Disengage. Now, this is also a max exclusive exceptional implant, so getting this thing is going to be as rare as can be, and then the amount of situations where you're going to use it are also rare. In addition to that, with it being a max suit exceptional, at the end of the day, max suits run different abilities from the emergency repair 9 times out of 10, and on top of that, other implants do exist that are relatively powerful as well. So it's not really a top tier pick. It can be fun, but it's not top tier. Salvage is next. Now this is actually an amazing implant for max suits as it returns health to your health pool whenever you kill a max suit in close proximity. Considering that it is only useful for maxes however, and can be traded out for a pocket engineer, it isn't worth investing into in the early game. Get yourself a pocket engineer and focus on other implants first, make this a late tier upgrade. Target Focus is the last implant in the D tier. Now, this is a default implant that you will get as soon as you create your new character. It's a great pick for learning to snipe with, and for vehicle gunner gameplay to determine enemy vehicle health and enemy infantry health, it's very useful. But it doesn't really need to be upgraded beyond the first level, and it really shouldn't be on many of your infantry loadouts in the long term. Of course, put it on there while you're learning the game, but Again, don't take this for the long term, it doesn't have that much uses there at all. So, with D tier being done and dusted, we can finally start to explore the C tier of implants. Now these are the implants that start to bring some very universal benefits or buffs to the battlefield for many classes, or 
while only working on certain classes can really start to open up new opportunities when it comes to gameplay that we will start to change your approach in certain situations. These are Ocular Shield, Jockey, Mending Field, Mobility Specialist, Logistics Specialist, Phylactery, Sweeper HUD, and Catlike. Now, let's start off with Ocular Shield. This can be an absolute lifesaver on point holes, or even if you find yourself pushing into a battle a little bit too quickly after you throw your own flash or concussion grenade in, which has happened to the best of us, don't worry. The effects ensure that you aren't going to be left completely blind and helpless with an incoming push, which can make a big difference between life or death in certain battles. It's something worth considering. Jockey. Now, Jockey unlocks part one of some incredible potential to become a much more effective turret gunner for the engineer, and makes you just that little less susceptible to incoming damage in rumble seats. If you want to become an unmovable object as an engineer on a turret, this and Robotics Technician is a must-have combination. Mind you, this only has a measurable impact in these two situations, so this might be worth holding off on until you have other more important implants sorted first and between jockey and robotics technician this is probably the lesser of the two required implants just something worth considering mending field now this implant brings you the opportunity to have some really nice secondary healing available as a combat medic if you're running the shield recharging field over the nano regen device especially considering that when you max out this implant it will actually grant your shield recharging field an additional aoe heal on health pools as opposed to just affecting shield pools it helps you to cover more bases of support on this kind of combat medic loadout which makes it really effective mobility specialist Okay, so Mobility Specialist is the implant that I would place on the lowest priority in this tier. And it's something that I also have never really run before this moment. But in saying that, the implant can allow for you to be a pretty nimble heavy assault while running your overshield. It's an off-meta build right now, but it can have its benefits when used right. Again, not a high priority, just something worth investigating if you're into mobility. Logistics Specialist allows for you to really easily have your squad mates redeploy into your vehicle in the unfortunate circumstance where one of you gets blasted mid-vehicle repair or some other situation like that. Of course, this implant really is only useful on vehicles that don't automatically come with squad spawning capabilities, but when running in harassers, tanks, liberators, anything like that, this can be a real lifesaver, and it doesn't mean you have to go back to an inconvenient redeploy location. Phylactery. Now, this is another exceptional implant sneaking into this tier, and the amount of fun you can have with this thing on a loadout that typically sees you scoring a lot of XP ticks per life is... It can't be argued, it's a grand old time. It gives you a second chance should you reach the required amount of XP ticks and can ensure that you stay on the front lines easily with minimal downtime. Again, max suits benefit from this quite a lot because it doesn't mean a medic needs to sit there for a long ass amount of time exposed and running the risk of being taken out while they're trying to revive you. Sweeper HUD. Okay, there is no denying this. This is a quintessential implant for vehicle players and even, at times, max suits. There's no denying that this has saved my bacon on multiple occasions. But in saying that, it does take a lot of ISO to rank up to a spot where it'll actually start to be effective. There are a lot of occasions where this implant will not actually spot tank mines early enough before you have time to stop unless you upgrade it a decent amount. So be ready to pour some serious investment into it. Originally, I had this in D tier for that reason, but I couldn't leave it there. It's quintessential. I had to move it up the tier system a bit. Cat-like. Now, this is an interesting one. The additional crouch speed is awesome for stalker cloakers who will be moving around more often than not while crouched. And it does have some interesting benefits for infantry versus infantry gameplay while crouch spamming. But the implant, when it's maxed out, opens doors like you would not have believed with its increased jump height. And you can have a stupid amount of fun getting into positions that you really shouldn't have been able to allow to have done beforehand. Expensive, but one of the best movement implants in the game right now. Now, that's the C tier. Things are just going to keep getting better and better now as we move into B tier. Implants here are starting to creep into what you could be considering the meta right now. In B tier, we have Regeneration, Battle Hardened, Deep Operative, Symbiote, Carapace, and Infravision. 
Regeneration is one of the longest standing and simplest implants in the game. Stay out of combat for a while and you'll get a small amount of healing over time. This implant makes it into B tier only due to the fact that if you're running a loadout that can hardly reach medics, yet uses something like C4 often, it gives you that flexibility to have a source of health regen to fall back on in the worst situations. It is a common implant and doesn't demand too many upgrades to be useful. It would have been higher on the list with a faster heal rate, but here it is. Battle Hardened. Like Regeneration, Battle Hardened has been around for a while, and for a while it was also considered the meta to take it on a heavy assault. It still holds a lot of merit to have it upgraded and available as it lets you practice your aim without the excessive explosions and flinch getting in the way of your aim. While I haven't used it in a while myself because I have learned to deal without it, it was my go-to for a while and deserves a place higher on the list. Deep Operative. Now, Deep Operative is an implant I didn't expect to make it this high on the list, and I wasn't originally going to put it here, but some of my more infiltrator savvy viewers on Twitch made sure to correct me here. This implant does require some serious investment to make it effective, but once you get it there, this can make you nigh unfindable as an infiltrator when paired with sensor shield, a suppressor, and some good know-how. Your visibility means you essentially become a ghost on the battlefield, and that cannot be denied as being powerful. Symbiote, okay. So remember how we mentioned that response jacket earlier allowed for you to get the effects of both nano weave and flak armor at the same time, but required you to take damage before coming into effect? Meet the better option of this concept. Symbiote gives you the benefit of nano weave armor, but is always present, giving you the ability to run flak armor for maximum protection. That said, you need to be aggressive, otherwise the implant will start eating at your health pull if you don't take damage. Just keep that in mind, normally you can get around that though because planet side there's damage flying everywhere all the time. Carapace, okay, this is one of the more popular exceptional implants in the game. Carapace has some of the most incredible synergy with combat medics and infiltrators running Vampire, and when you use it right on the battlefield, it can make some incredibly dominant loadouts. Dealing with small bits of damage continuously can be annoying though because you're not going to get any sort of regeneration like you would with a shield by default, so having a loadout that has a reliable healing source is key for this implant. Infravision is the last implant we have in B tier, and it's just a grand amount of fun for target acquisition and makes sniping just that little bit more cheesy. <laughs> the downside here is that you do have to sacrifice another implant to make room for this one, which I will admit is something that I have done on a couple of occasions, especially on the darker nights of Hossen and Amorish where I couldn't see enemy targets but it's still the only reason it doesn't find itself higher on the list. The fact that you do have to sacrifice an implant that gives you a benefit elsewhere for something that just essentially helps your vision. And with that, that now brings us to A tier, the A game, quite literally. The implants that you should aim to earn, the implants that you should aim to upgrade, and the implants that when you do own become absolute pillars of your loadouts in the end game. In the A tier, we have a simulate, Ammo Printer, Sensor Shield, Robotics Technician, Bionics, and Safeguard. Assimilate has been long considered a part of the meta, and running this thing on any class is going to serve as a resource to you. It helps to incentivize headshots, which will press you to improve your aim, and on some classes like the Heavy Assault, it synergizes well with things like the Adrenaline Shield to help you turn into an absolute crowd control monster. This thing is an absolute must to have. Ammo Printer, another implant that has been in the game as long as the implant system has been around. This implant will periodically grant you ammo over time, which for the light assault and vehicles, by the way this works in vehicles, is imperative to you being able to remain independent from engineers and ammo resupply towers. Seriously, this implant is a must own as well. Sensor Shield, now this is also imperative to the CQC Infiltrator and Light Assault play in some situations, as it allows for you to completely nullify the effects of the Infiltrator Recon tools when upgraded appropriately. People rely on the minimap a lot in this game. So, being able to strip that resource from them is incredibly powerful. Now, yeah, yes, while the kill cam does reveal your position whenever you kill an enemy, if you have Sensor Shield and keep moving, you are able to still keep the enemy guessing in the long run. It's also incredibly cost effective, being worthwhile at every level, and every level getting better and better. 
Robotics Technician. This is once again another implant that is designed to make the engineer turret just that little bit more powerful. It can't be understated the impact that this has on reducing incoming damage and at max rank will continue to heal your turret from damage it takes even when you run combat. When combined with Jockey, this takes the Engineer Mana Turret from being a fairly easy item to counter to an absolute menace that can stop entire platoons on in their tracks. Bionics, the opposite and slightly more adaptable version of Carapace that favours shields over health pool. Thanks to the majority of your healing being shields, you're going to get small pieces of fragment damage coming back to you without needing to crank out a medkit, which allows you to take a medkit slot and move it into something a bit more useful, like C4 for example. Not to mention that alongside the engineer's improvements to shield regeneration speeds by default, it can make the class a frontline menace with very minimal downtime. Bionics and Engineer synergizes very, very well. And Safeguard. This is the second default implant available in the game, and just on the notion of it being free makes it a great implant to run with for a while out of the gate. Reducing your damage taken after being revived ensures that you have a slightly better chance to get back into the fight properly. It's a good implant to learn the game with, which is why I've put it so high on the list, and as you upgrade it, you do get some pretty nice benefits. But wait, that's not all. There are still two more implants in the game that we have yet to go over. These are our S tier implants, one that is class specific, but has personally changed the effectiveness of this class for me personally, and the other is just so universally applicable that I wouldn't be able to count the amount of classes that it is on for me on my two hands. These are our S tier implants, Survivalist and Combat Surgeon. Survivalist, you guys surely saw this one coming. Survivalist provides an amazing ability for you to break away from an engagement that isn't going your way. And in addition to that, it provides a shorter shield regen rate, which allows for you to get back into the thick of it much easier. And at max rank, it helps with reload speeds too. It's just such a universally applicable implant across the board. And to make things better, it's ranked as common rarity, which means it's easy to get. It's definitely worth the investment to upgrade it in the future too. Combat Surgeon. Alright, this is the second class specific implant for the combat medic we've covered in this video. This thing works a treat on any combat medic that runs the nano regen device as it ensures that you can keep this thing running for longer and by mitigating its arguably really long recharge rate. And you keep this thing running for longer with this implant by just doing what a combat medic does, getting kills and revives. And at max rank, it gives you an additional resistance for simply reviving people. One of my most common plays with this thing has been throwing a revive grenade into a room, popping the nano regen device, heal the people as they get up while you have some additional resistances going on from incoming damage. It's so good. I can't recommend this implant enough for a combat medic in the late tier, and it's just, yeah, it's really, really worth upgrading, guys, if you're a combat medic main, which is why I've put it into the S tier. It just universally works so well as the combat medic's main implant. Whew, bloody hell. That was, I believe, 52 implants, all covered in one video and ranked in effectiveness. Guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. This was a long one to make. It took a lot of thinking, and as you can probably tell from the graphics on your screen right now, it took a lot of work as well. So if you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate a backing in the like button, guys, and some support on the video. It would really mean the world. On top of that, guys, if you are new to the channel and you found yourself enjoying it, feel free to subscribe and make sure you keep up to date with all content which I release in the future. And let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite implants are in the game, and if you would have made some changes to this list as far as the tier rankings are concerned, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say there as well. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.